Chapter 14 The Rescue Oblivious to the scene before him, the young Sumerian, casting caution to the winds of fate, stepped forward. To regain his father's sword alone possessed him. Valeria and Subutai, with total disregard of danger, loyally moved forward at his side. As the three figures, arms at the ready, cut off all escape from the alcove, Thulsa Doom strove to cast off the stupor that held him in thrall. His eyes narrowed as he focused on the three determined faces and the three blades, no more than a few strides from his person. An anger more terrible than any the two pit fighters had ever seen twisted his visage and for a moment immobilized them. Valeria sank the nails of her left hand into Conan's sword arm and whispered, Look! Subutai drew in his breath and swore a Hyrcanian oath. One of the leopards chained to a pillar opened its golden cat's eyes and, with twitching ears, watched silently. Conan stared. A weird change was coming over the slender form of doom, his neck rippled and seemed to lengthen. The lower part of his face bulged forward, elongating his jaws. His aquiline nose shriveled and disappeared as his forehead receded. Cracks appeared on his ascetic face, narrow dark lines like those of river ice during a spring thaw. The cracks connected and formed a pattern of huge, overlapping scales. As his lips thinned and vanished, his sleepy eyes rounded into lidless orbs with slit pupils ringed in red. A forked tongue of dark purple flicked out of the serpent's head that Doom now wore, wavered to test the air, and speedily withdrew. Crom, muttered Conan as the serpent head and neck swayed as a cobra sways in its basket to the whine of the snake charmer's pipe or the motion of his body. Subutai was the first to recover his voice. We must burn out this snake's nest, he whispered. Conan nodded. Foulness like this can only be cleansed with the torch. But only after we get the princess, breathed Valeria. And my father's blade. With the speed of a pouncing puma, the Sumerian leaped into the alcove, darted past the swaying serpent's head, and lifted the great weapon from its pegs. At the same instant, Valeria bounded across the marble floor to stand, with legs widespread and sword in hand, above the kneeling follower of Set. Come, she whispered. Princess Yasimina looked up at the warrior woman, magnificent in her strength and determination, and screamed. Get up! Valeria commanded, and when the terrified girl failed to obey, she seized her long hair and pulled her to her feet. Feebly, the stupefied girl struggled as Valeria grasped her arm and half dragged her, whimpering, across the room in which the sated lovers and drugged celebrants lay with their guards in passionless self-absorption. Once the unwilling princess had left the alcove, Conan and Subutai snatched up candles and touched the flaming tapers to the drifting curtains that framed the resting place of Thulsa Doom. The handmaidens, aroused by the acrid stench of burning cloth, fled to the central pavilion, but they found no refuge there. Covering Valeria's retreat, Conan and Subutai paused only long enough to touch a candle flame to one gauze drapery, then another, and another. One by one, the cultists woke, coughing and rubbing smoke-filled eyes. Then, seeing blazing curtains all around them, they shrieked in mindless terror and scrambled for exits at the far end of the chamber. 
One brutish guard interposed himself between the raiders and the stairway by which they sought to flee. Suddenly, there was a flash of steel and the beast man fell, half hacked in two by Conan's Atlantean steel. Subutai thrust a lighted taper into the face of a turbaned youth who came at him with a dagger. Screaming and clutching his singed forehead, the boy staggered off. As he neared the sheltering stairs, the Sumerian glanced back, searching the incandescent room for Thulsa Doom, hoping to find him lying dead in his alcove. But even as he looked, his hope was dashed. The curtains no longer smouldered, the smoke had rolled away, and there was no trace of the wizard, who seemed none other than the serpent god himself. Beyond the chaos, near to the narrow stairs up which the invaders had come, stood Valeria. At her feet crouched a distraught and trembling Yasemina, whose furtive glances bespoke a frantic search for an opportunity to escape her captor. Suddenly, a tight little smile flitted across her sullen lips. Like a firefly, it lit her face for a brief moment and vanished. To Valeria, with her training as a pit fighter, it flashed a message of trouble to come. She heard a scrape of boots on the stairs, faint as the sound was, above the throb of the incessant drums in the cavern below, and the screams of panic in the once lovely fairyland created for lovers and their beloved. Valeria whirled. With her blade flashing like a serpent's tongue, she faced an enormous warrior clad in iron-studded leather. Although he was not young, his face was as grim as death, and the muscles of his sword arm looked as strong as bands of steel. He was flanked by four hairy guards carrying spiked wooden clubs, and menace glowed in their bestial eyes. Rexor! trilled Princess Yasemina. Rexor, save me! Save me for our master who loves me! Kneeing the princess to the floor, Valeria crouched to avoid a blow from a guardsman's mace. Then, with lightning speed, she sprang. Her tulwar licked out, and death was on its point. The guard staggered and clutched his throat, whence blood spurted out between his hairy fingers. Leaping, twisting, dodging, Valeria circled the guards, avoiding blows of the maces that would have smashed her like an insect. A second guard lumbered forward, snarling and growling, but the lithe girl fainted and thrust into the opening between the leathern plates of the brute's armour. The anthropoid grunted, clutched his torn belly, and then collapsed. Her blade, now crimson-stained, caught another in the neck. Shrieking horribly, he rushed forward. Valeria jumped aside, allowing the momentum of his forward thrust to carry him into a burning drapery in the center of the room. Then Rexor and the remaining guard closed in on her. As they backed her into a corner, she knew that she was boxed in and soon would be denied the speed that was the basis of her successes. Just then, Conan, like a stalking jungle beast, glided between two blazing draperies, his father's great sword held in two bronze fists. The beast man turned at the Sumerian's approach, but Conan's heavy sword sheared through his armour and dropped him to his knees with a split skull. As Valeria moved towards Doom's first lieutenant, Conan roared, There goes the princess! Catch her! Leave Rexor to me! The giant's eyes flashed red at the sight of the young Sumerian. He had left Conan broken and hung on the tree of woe. Now he was whole and hale. But Rexor had no time to ponder the miracle. The great sword clenched in Conan's hands was upraised in preparation for a mighty downstroke. 
two blades clashed together with the fury of a tempest. A shower of sparks signalled a ringing crash as Rexor's weapon, responding to the impact of the Atlantean steel on lesser iron, clattered onto the marble floor. Rexor hurled his hilt at Conan's head and, as the Sumerian ducked, the cultist warrior sprang forward and wrapped unrelenting arms around his huge antagonist. Conan dropped his father's sword, for it was useless at such close quarters, and met his opponent's wrestling grip with undiminished strength. The two giants staggered about the burning room, unmindful of the smoke and the flames, their powerful thews swelling as they matched two wills of iron. Relentlessly, they clawed and gouged and kicked at one another. When at last Rexor gripped Conan's throat, his massive fingers bit like the jaws of a steel trap into the Sumerian's corded neck. Conan, fighting for life-giving air, managed to pry one gross finger loose and bent it back until the bone cracked. With a howl of pain and fury, Rexor released his grip and hurled the younger man against the central pillar. While Conan, half stunned, sagged against the malachite column, struggling to gather his wits, Rexor stooped for the great sword forged by the Sumerian's father so long ago. Just then, one of the leopards, maddened by the fire and smoke, snapped the chain that bound it to the pillar and pounced on Rexor's back and bore him to the ground. The stricken man fought in vain against the sharp claws of the animal. At length, he fell screaming to the pave, while the frantic cat leaped away, its broken chain clattering along the marble tiles as it made its way to safety. Conan, head spinning, got to his feet. Rexor lay sprawled in a pool of blood, the great sword beyond his convulsive grasp. Recovering the weapon, the Sumerian youth searched through the pervasive smoke for Valeria and the princess. He saw the girl thief back among the charred draperies, striving to control their unwilling captive. As he started forward, an ominous creaking above his head caused Conan to glance up. The supports of the pavilion, along which little flames ran like luminous mice, had begun to crumble. One beam, then another, fell. The stone column upon which the roof pole rested cracked, spilling broken bits of stone across the polished floor. Pausing no longer, the barbarian rushed to Valeria's aid. Yasmina was struggling to flee, and despite her skill and determination, Valeria's strength was fading. As Conan reached his exhausted comrade in arms, the roar of collapsing masonry resounded through the fast emptying chamber. The malachite pillar gave way and toppled, pinning Rexor to the ground, while crumpled tent cloth, half burned beams, and broken roof tiles nearly entombed the fallen man. The spectacular collapse of the fantastic setting and the prolonged rumble of its destruction distracted Valeria. And in that single moment, Yasmina wrenched her arms free and sped away. The Sumerian sprang after her. In a few long strides, he caught up with her and whirled her around. The besotted girl, screeching imprecations, clawed at Conan's face. Aware of the danger to the princess, as well as to her rescuers, should more guards arrive, Conan abandoned his code of barbaric chivalry and slapped her hard across her face. Amazed, the hysterical girl fell silent, offering no further resistance, as he scooped up her slender body, tossed it over one brawny shoulder, and ran for the exit, with Valeria at his heels. They zigzagged through the chamber, dodging piles of smouldering rubble and terrified groups of the faithful, who belatedly sought their way through the smoke to the safety of their leader's inner corridors. 
Near the stairs up which they had come, Conan and Valeria found Subutai crouched behind an urn, an arrow at the ready, lest other anthropoid guards should seek entry to the burning ruin, which had once been a pleasure garden in a vaulted cave. As his companions emerged from the acrid haze, Subutai shouted, This way! Ere the fire spreads and cuts us off! Bounding down the narrow stairs, they returned to the huge cavern wherein dwelt the families of the ape-like servitors of Thulsa Doom. They hurried across the bridge just in time to hide behind a boulder when a contingent of the guard clattered past on their way to fight the fire. Melting into the gloom, Valeria and Subutai led the Sumerian and his unconscious burden along the narrow passage among the enshrouding rocks towards the cleft through which they had made their entrance. And all the while, the great drums beat out their frenzied chant of doom, doom, doom. Behind them, where once had stood the pavilion of pleasure, the fire and chaos subsided. The singed and wearied firefighters fell back and stood with bowed and humble heads as Thulsa Doom strode from the inner reaches of his fortress mountain, his body clad in armour, his head returned to mortal guise, his eyes blazing with fury. The leader of the beast guard stepped forward to salute him. Thanks set you live, master, he cried. We knew our god would keep you safe from harm. The cult leader nodded briefly. Then anger suffused his slit-eyed, pallid face. Where is the priestess Yazimina? Why is she not here to welcome me? A heap of rubble moved, a groan issued forth. At Doom's command, the guards lifted up charred timbers and tore away the smouldering remains of the once lovely furnishings. Willing hands helped Rexor to rise. Bloody and battered, he stood before the leader of the cult. Doom's wrath flared. Know you, where is the princess? The man you crucified, and the others. They killed three guards. They cut me, they carried her off while I was helpless. Infidels. Assassins. Purveyors of death. The cult leader hissed. They have violated my sanctum. They have defiled our holy place. They shall die in lakes of blood. Seek them out, good Rexor, and bring them to me, alive or dead. Go. Rexor saluted and turned away. Followed by his lumbering beastmen, he vanished among the curls of smoke that rose above the dying coals. Through the great cavern the invaders fled, their footsteps muffled by the beating of the incessant drums. They did not pause to watch the bubbling cauldron with its grisly contents. They did not notice the beastmen feasting in the firelight. They prayed to their separate gods that the stalagmites which sheltered them would save them from the casual glance of some sated dweller of the cave. Then, like a miracle, a patch of starlit sky swam into view. Conan grunted with relief as they squeezed through the cleft and found themselves on the self-same ledge from which they had breached the Mountain of Power. The same waterfall thundered nearby, a welcome change from the pounding drumbeats within the cavern. <laughs> 